2006, very soon to be high school graduates. Welcome to the 2006 Berwick Academy Baccalaureate Program. I ask that everyone please rise as it gives me
kids are good at spelling at bedtime, then they needed to learn how to spell it and practice pronouncing it. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel and Dan, for that. Um, Isla, um, when we return to the subject, I asked Isla, Isla had the good sense to make this suggestion, and I have the poor judgment and poor taste to repeat it. Isla said you should wipe really good. <laughs> Different. Um, 
why I stopped in Indiana rather than Colorado or California, I think it was just pure stupidity. Um, <laughs> in March, April, it was probably March, um, at Notre Dame, as is the case with some schools, they assigned you to a dorm based on when you put your deposit in. And I knew that alumni and Dylan were the two cool halls to end up in a Notre Dame. They were old halls with a lot of traditions. They always wanted intramural sports. The buildings were 150 years old. They had high ceilings. You might get a single. Um, and Grace and Flannery were the new modern high rises that nobody wanted to be in. So at some point in March, I asked my father. I gave him the envelope. It was addressed. It had a stamp on it. I gave him the form. And my recollection is I said, Dad, could you please write the deposit check and put this in the mail? His recollection was, could you please write the deposit check and give it all back to me? Um, it sat somewhere in our kitchen for six or seven weeks after he wrote the check. And it was only sometime in late April, probably within days of the deposit date being due, that my mother discovered it. I was furious, as only a teenager can be. And I was positive, as only a teenager can be, that I was right and my father screwed up. As parents are prone to do, my mom took my dad's side, um, and I lost that one. And here's what ensued, very quickly, bear with me. So I ended up in Grace Hall, not alumni or Dylan, because of when I sent this letter in. Because of when I sent this letter in late, I ended up with a roommate by the name of John Heasley, who would be my friend of 25 some odd years. The ways friends affects each other's life it changes the course of everything. I'll talk a bit about that, but right off the bat, that to me is amazing. It was John's father, my roommate's father, that ended up helping me get a summer job at a public relations firm in Chicago, the summer between my junior and senior year of college. Towards the tail end of that summer, I let the personnel office know that I was going to finish up on a Friday. A kind person in the personnel office informed me that that was the end of a two-week pay period, and that if I worked the following Monday, they would pay me for the full two weeks. They said that they just do that, because we make junk changes, and it turns they didn't care. Um, so I came up the next, I showed up the next Monday and I got $700 um, for about a half day's work. I decided, although I was on a tight budget, that I'd dedicate $100 of that to something special. So I put the rest in my bank account, my checking account. Actually, it was a bank account. I wasn't allowed to write checks when I was a senior in college. And that afternoon, while running errands before heading back from Chicago to Notre Dame, I stumbled across a Panasonic 10-speed bicycle on sale for $99.99. .99. I decided that's how I spent my $100. I spent a lot of time bicycling as a kid, but I hadn't in years. It was a passion when I was 10, when I was 12, but through high school and college, none of it. I took it back with me, and in the fall of my senior year, I re-fell in love with bicycling. That led to me talking to friends into bicycling across the country. The story of Oregon to Virginia Beach, Virginia, the summer after we graduated. That trip led to me and one of the friends that I did that trip with planning another trip to Europe. And through that trip, I met a fellow by the name of Garth Lewis, who introduced me to the Eagle Rock School in Colorado, where I would work later. Robert Burkhardt was the principal there, and years after I worked there, he wrote me a letter in return to some questions I sent him that was exquisitely timed and arrived in my mailbox in Cambridge, Massachusetts that led, directly led to me doing volunteer work at the Cambridge Engine Latin School in Cambridge, Massachusetts. That volunteer position led to me teaching at Cambridge Engine Latin a couple years later, which led to me being invited to serve as a panelist at a workshop in December of 1996, is where we are now, at the Harvard Education School that a woman by the name of Sheila Crane attended because she was working at the Global Education Office in uh, for Boston Public Schools. That same night, after Sheila and I met each other, didn't have a chance to talk. We both ended up at the Brendan Bean Pub in Jamaica Plain, a neighborhood in Boston. Tuesday nights were Irish Session. Irish Session, for those of you that don't know, is informal music being played and neighborhood folks hanging out. My roommate and I went every Tuesday night. These are also called Cayleys, Gaelic word for Cayley. That's my oldest daughter's name. Having met somebody twice in the same day, who struck me as smart, attractive, and having a good sense of humor, and we talked that evening, I had the good sense to ask her out. I asked her to marry me. She said yes, we got married. And Kaylee, Isla, and Zadie, the three human beings who I adore more than anything in the life itself, and the parents out there know this, I hope you know this, about how your parents feel about you, were born and are here. Okay. If 
my father had done what I had asked him. <laughs> I would live in the alumni Villa Hall. I never would have met John Heasley. Notre Dame was a big school, and every one of those steps was direct. I know there are those among you that would be advocates of fate. That Sheila and I would somehow have met, and these three human beings that I adore would somehow have been born. Since this is my baccalaureate sermon, I get to say that that's not true. That's wrong. Um, what I would say as consolation is that I believe that things this random, this fortuitous, this coincidental, that lead to the things they do is quite honestly wondrous and miraculous. And maybe it approaches something very close to the idea of fate. My little story is not special. I am not special. I'm special in the same way that all of us are, in the way that the 65 soon-to-be graduates of the class of 2006 are, in the same way that we all are. And if we're all special, are any of us actually special? I don't think so. Millions of little decisions, events, big, small, trivial, the things we do and say, the things we should have done, should have said, didn't say, didn't do, things our parents have said and done, our friends have said and done, people we don't even know, the actions they've taken, the steps they've taken, all shape where we are. Your parents meeting, their parents meeting, those things don't happen, you're not sitting here right now. The things that brought you to Berwick, there are a million small, trivial, insignificant things that have brought us to this moment. Some of them were big decisions, some of them we didn't even know happened. You could go back to the birth of civilization and the creation of this planet to kind of put together the pieces that have brought us here. And I think from my experience, having sat in a baccalaureate program 25 years ago as to where I ended up now, um, I've begun to sense how miraculous it is how those things come together. There's two ways you could potentially go with this idea. And Milan Kundera, the unbearable lightness of being, describes it much more articulately and passionately than I will now. But you could look at this and say, you know what? Everything is absolutely so critical. The weight of the world will rest with every decision. How you do on a test, whether or not you get your homework in on time, whether or not you apply early decision to a specific school, whether or not you get in early decision to that school, what school you decide to go to when you choose among three, four, or five, where you live on campus, who you'll room with, whether or not you'll join a fraternity or sorority. You could drown in the weight of realizing that every little decision will shape the next day, the next year, the next 10 years of your life. Or you could go the opposite way. This is all so complicated, this is all so intricate, there's just no way it matters. None of it matters. Why put any effort into any of it? Why I'm here at Berwick, what I'm doing, where I'll go to college, does any of it matter? Classic dilemma of duality, of tension. It's a yin and a yang. The interesting part of any duality is what's in between. Everything matters so much, the weight of the world, and nothing really matters at all. And which is it? Well, it's both. Everything matters immensely, and nothing matters at all. What's in between, for me, is this. You follow your heart, you do your best, and then you let go. You follow your heart, you find your bliss, you do your best, and then you can let go. Following your heart, following your bliss, as Joseph Campbell describes it, you need to figure that out for yourself, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Your gut, your heart tells you what to do, the little decisions, the big decisions. You don't need the weight of the world on you. It's not a matter of nothing really matter, mattering. Follow your heart. And then from there, it's pretty simple, although it's a hard habit to live, live by, you do your best. And if follow your heart and do your best. Letting go, accepting, living in the present is a lot easier. Peace, peace of mind, acceptance, oneness follows quite logically. My hope is that all 65 members of the class of 2006 will find the bliss, will find the path, will continue to do their best. We've seen a lot of that here and they'll continue, I trust, to make it a habit. And I hope you'll learn to let go, to live in the present. Do not be consumed with the past, do not be consumed with future, pla future plans for the present moment. Though your actual graduation is still about 15 hours away, congratulations to the members of the class of 2006. <laughs>
of academic endeavor. Our first honor award for English will be presented by Mary Gerson, Department Chair for English. Mary. Science Award 
presented by Sue Maddock is next. Sue. I know that Ms. Bissett was anxious for the honor of presenting this award tonight, 
Instead, it has become my privilege to ask Kevin Worcester to come forward and accept the Biology Achievement Award.
what a real baccalaureate explanation is, however, I figured you should know. Uh, Bacchus, the god of wine, god, jubilation. Laureate comes from laudo, means to praise. Uh, it was an opportunity for affluent people, rather affluent people, to get together. And being affluent, you would have an education. And because you were well off and well versed in pretty much everything from music to the economy, you had money. If you had money, you had good wine. When you had good wine, you had good friends. <laughs> and, uh, the evening would begin in conversation relative to uh, the status of the world and where the Romans and the Greeks fit into it, and then inevitably it would be an evening of debauchery and orgy type behavior. <laughs>
Congratulations, Devin. Next up is the Art Honor Award presented by Reagan Russell. Reagan.
years. And uh, oftentimes I see him two, three, sometimes four times a day. Um, a wonderful young man, and Dana's story is really a story of hard work and desire. Uh, as an incoming freshman, Dana brought more enthusiasm than skill to his applied lessons. <laughs> but he had drive. He was eager and willing to work, and work he did. Uh, Dana soaked up information like a sponge, always asking questions, always focused, and always striving to improve. In addition to his four years of voice lessons, he added piano and viola lessons this senior year. Ah, he sought performance opportunities on and off campus, including Carnegie Hall, all for the sheer love of performing and to hone his skills. I'm confident that music will always play a central role in his future, and I am proud to say Dana has truly found his voice. Congratulations. <laughs>
It is clear that Alex's success is due to diligent, comprehensive, and consistent effort. Congratulations, Alex. Congratulations. 